I saw then in my dream that Hopeful looked back and saw Ignorance, whom they had left behind, coming after. Look how far yonder youngster loitereth behind. Aye, I see him, but I trow that he careth not for our company. But I'm sure that it would not have hurt him had he kept pace with us hitherto. That is true, but I wager that he thinks otherwise. That I trow he doth. But however, let us tarry for him. Come, lad, we wait your company. Greetings, sirs. How do you do? Very well, thank you. Why do you tarry so far behind? I take my pleasure in walking alone, thank you. I told you he cared not for our company. But let us see if we can bring him to his senses. Aye, let's. Pray tell, lad, how stands it between God and your soul now? I hope well, for I am always full of good feelings that come into my mind to comfort me as I walk. What good feelings? Pray tell us. Why, I think of God and heaven. So do the devils and damned souls. But I think of them and desire them. So do many that are never like to come there. The soul of the sluggard desireth and hath nothing. But I think of them, and leave all for them. That I doubt, for leaving of all is a very hard matter. Yea, a harder matter than many are aware of. Tis true, I have. What makes you think so? My heart tells me so. The wise man says, he that trusteth in his own heart is a fool. This is spoken of an evil heart, but mine is a good one. But how dost thou prove that? It comforts me in the hopes of heaven. That may be through its deceitfulness. For a man's heart may minister comfort to him by hoping for things to which it has no right. But my heart and my life are in harmony, and therefore my hope is well grounded. Who told thee so? My heart tells me so. Thy heart tells thee so? Dear friend, except the word of God beareth witness in this matter, other testimony is of no value. But is it not a good heart that hath good thoughts? And is not that a good life that is according to God's commandments? Yes, but it is one thing to have these things and quite another to only think you do. All right, all right then. Since you are wise so overmuch, do tell. What count you as good thoughts and a life according to God's commandments? Well, there be several kinds of thoughts. Some about ourselves, some of God, some of Christ, and some others. Tell me then, what be good thoughts about ourselves? Such thoughts as agree with the word of God. And when do our thoughts agree with the word of God? When we pass the same judgment upon ourselves which the word passes. Explain thyself. The word of God saith of the natural man, There is none righteous, there is none that doeth good. It saith also that every imagination of the heart of man is only evil, and that continually. Now then, when we think thus of ourselves, then are our thoughts good ones, because they agree with the word of God. I will never believe that my heart is so bad as all that. Therefore thou hast never had one good thought about thyself. Nonsense! But let us talk about my life. At least my life is honorable. The word of God saith that man's ways are crooked ways, not good, but perverse. Now when a man with humility doth agree with this, then his thoughts about his life are good, because they agree with the word of God. Bah! You look overmuch on the musty side of life. Not so. We but look at ourselves as we really are, wicked, perverse, selfish and disobedient. And when we see ourselves as such, then are we in a way to ask Christ to change us into his glorious image, as he has promised to do. And then our life and thoughts are full of the joy of Christ, as he himself hath said, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. Enough of that, enough of that. Tell me, what are good thoughts concerning God? Again, those that agree with the word of God. Which? When we think that he knows us better than we know ourselves, and can see sin in us where we can see none. When we think he knows our inmost thoughts, and that our heart, with all its depths, is always open unto his eyes. Also, when we think that our own righteousness stinks in his nostrils, even in our best performances. 
Do you think that I am such a fool as to think that God can see no further than I? Or that I would dare to come to God in the best of my performances? Why then, how dost thou think in this matter? Why, I think I must believe in Christ for justification. But how can you believe in him when you have such a high opinion of yourself? Why, that you feel no need of his justification. I just believe, that's all. But how dost thou believe? I believe that Christ died for sinners, and that Christ takes my religious duties and makes them acceptable to his Father, by virtue of his merits, and so shall I be justified. Do you verily believe that? Yea, in verity. Then let me answer you in four parts. First, thou believest with a fantastical faith, for this faith is nowhere described in the word. Second, Thou believest with a false faith, because it taketh justification from the personal righteousness of Christ, and applies it to thine own. Third, this faith maketh not Christ a justifier of thy person, but of thy actions, and of thy person for thy actions' sake, which is false. Therefore this faith is deceitful, and will leave thee under the wrath of God in the day of judgment. What? Would you have us to trust to what Christ in his own person has done without us? Are our own works of no account? No, such a belief would allow a man to give free rein to all manner of lust, since his own acts have no bearing on his salvation. Ignorance is thy name, and as thy name is, so art thou. For thou art ignorant of the true effects of saving faith, which doth lead a man to love God's name, his word, his ways and his people. One with such a love will do none but good acts. Pray tell, lad, have you ever had Christ revealed to you? What? Revelations now? You and all you believe be the fruit of distracted brains. Not so, friend. Christ is so far above our natural thoughts that he cannot be known unless God the Father reveals him to us. Bah! That is your faith, not mine. And my faith is just as good as yours, though I have not in my head so many technicalities and legalities as you do. Friend Ignorance, not only must Christ be revealed to you as a gift, but your very faith must come to you as a gift. I see that you are ignorant of true faith, and I counsel thee to be awakened to see thine own wretchedness, and fly to Christ Jesus for salvation. Nay, but you too travel too fast for me. I shall go along at my own good speed and my own good faith, and I'll wager that I'll get to the kingdom not far behind thee. Thou must flee to Christ, or thou shalt never come to said kingdom. Perhaps so, perhaps no. We shall see who is right by and by. Fare thee well, gentlemen. I trust to see thee in the kingdom. If you do, it will only be because thou hast mended thy thinking. My heart tells me that there be no mending to be done. And now adieu.